Hello everyone. Welcome to Kamin English Learning Channel. Today, I am going to deliver a speech for you. An extract from the authentic text of Steve Seidel, Treaty Oration, 1854. An extract from the authentic text of Chief Seidel Treaty Oration, 1854. Day and night cannot dwell together. The red man has ever fled the approach of the white man. As the morning mist flees before the morning sun, However, your proposition seems fair and I think that my people will accept it and will retire to the reservation you offer them. Then we will dwell apart in peace for the words of the great white chief seem to be the words of nature speaking to my people out of dense darkness. It matters little where we pass the remnant of our days. There will not be many. The Indian's night promises to be dark. Not a single star of hope hovers above his horizon. Sad voiced winds moan in the distance. Grim fate seems to be on the red man's trail and wherever he will hear the approaching footsteps of his fell destroyer and prepare stolidly to meet his doom, as does the wounded doe that hears the approaching footsteps of the hunter. A few more moons, a few more winters, and not one of the Descendants of the mighty host that once moved over this broad land or lived in happy homes, protected by the great spirit, will remain to mourn over the graves of a people once more powerful and hopeful than yours. But why should I mourn at the untimely fate of my people? Tribe follows tribe and nation follows nation, like the waves of the sea. It is the order of nature, and regret is useless. Your time of decay may be distant, but it will surely come, for even the white man whose God walked and talked with him, as friend to friend, cannot be exempt from the common destiny. We may be brothers after all. We will see. We will ponder your preposition and when we decide, we will let you know. But should we accept it, I hear and now make this condition that we will not be denied the privilege without molestation of visiting at any time the tombs of our ancestors friends and children. Every part of this soil is sacred in the estimation of my people. Every hillside, every valley, every plain and grove has been hallowed by some sad or happy event in days long vanished. Even the rocks which seem to be dumb and dead as the swelter in the sun along the silent shore, thrilled with memories of stirring events, connected with the lives of my people and the very dust upon which you how which you now stand responds more lovingly to their footsteps than yours, because it is rich with the blood of our ancestors and our bare feet are conscious of the sympathetic touch. Our departed braves, fond mothers, glad, happy-hearted maidens, and even the little children who lived here and rejoiced here for a brief season, will love these somber solitudes and at a greed shadowy 
be returning spirits. And when the last red man shall have perished and the memory of my tribe shall have become a myth among the white men, these shows will swam with the invisible death of my tribe. And when your children's children think themselves alone in the field, the stove, the shop upon the highway, or in the silence of the pathless woods, they will not be alone. In all the earth, there is no place dedicated to solitude. At night, when the streets of your cities and villages are silent, and you think them deserted, they will throng with a returning host that once filled them and still love this beautiful land. The white man will never be alone. Let him be just and deal kindly with my people, for the dead are not powerless. Death, did I say? There is no death, only a change of worlds. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed and understood today's speech very well. Try to deliver this speech with clear pronunciation and be confident. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. I will meet you soon with an interesting lesson later. Bye.